Thus says the High and Lofty One, who inhabits eternity, whose name is Holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, and with those also who are of a contrite and humble spirit. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go up to the house of the Lord. All God's blessings, people of God. This is our video worship service for the week of Sunday, July the 5th, 2020. This will be the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, or as we're using the evening prayer service from the Book of Common Prayer this evening, the week of the fourth Sunday after Trinity. May God bless us as we worship him together. For the fruit of all creation, thanks be to God. Gifts bestowed on every nation, thanks be to God. For the plowing, sowing, reaping, silent growth while we are sleeping, future needs in earth's safekeeping, thanks be to God. In the just reward of labor, God's will is done. In the help we give our neighbor, God's will is done. In our world, what task of caring for the hungry and despairing. In the harvests we are sharing, thanks be to God. For the harvests of the Spirit, thanks be to God. For the good we all inherit, thanks be to God. For the wonders that are around us, for the truths that still astound us, most of all that love has found us, thanks be to God. In our Books of Common Prayer, we are on the bottom of page 18. Dearly beloved sisters and brothers, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. But confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same through his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for his great benefits that we have received from his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as for the soul. Well, Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here with us in this video service, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. We pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. 
Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind. In Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of sinners, but rather that we may turn from our wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. The Lord pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As a beloved and forgiven people, we pray as Christ taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord, the Lord's name be praised. Our psalm for this morning, signed in the Revised Common Lectionary for uh, Proper 14, Sunday, July the 5th this year, is um, a psalm in celebration of our Old Testament reading, which we'll hear next. It's a lovely marriage psalm, and it is Psalm 45. You may find this on page 387 of the Canadian Books of Common Prayer. I am going to pray Psalm 45, verses 10 to 17. Hearken, O daughter, consider and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king have pleasure in thy beauty. Since he is now thy Lord, bow thou down to him. And the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter within the palace is all glorious. Her clothing is of wrought gold. She is brought to the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins that be her fellows bear her company and are brought unto thee. With joy and gladness are they led along as they enter into the king's palace. Instead of thy fathers, Thou shalt have children, whom thou mayest make princes and princesses in all the earth. I will make thy name to be remembered from one generation to another. Therefore shall all the peoples praise thee, world without end. And a psalm prayer attached for this within our Book of Alternative Services. Gracious God, your love unites heaven and earth in a new festival of gladness. Lift our spirits to learn the way of joy that leads us to your banquet hall, where all is gladness and praise. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. 
Christians, of course, and that psalm, the bridegroom, who was the royal king of Israel in the psalm, is pictured as Jesus, and the bride is pictured as uh, his community of the church. It's a powerful image. And the invitation to forget our fathers and mothers, not literally, of course, but to look forward to the children we shall bring, maybe not, not literally, of course, might be others we share the faith with, we inspire. This image of looking to the future, God's blessing, is a very beautiful one. And it's kind of sets the scene for our Old Testament reading, which is from the book of Genesis, chapter 24. It's a long, in fact, one of the longest stories in the Bible. It's a chapter of 67 verses. So I'm going to uh, read excerpts a bit here. I'm going to read uh, verses 1 to 4. Genesis 24, verses 1 to 4, 10 to 17. And twenty four sorry, one to four, ten to thirty eight, and fifty six to sixty seven. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his house, who had charge of all that he had, Put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I live, but will go to my country and to my kindred and get a wife for my son Isaac. And down to ten. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, taking all kinds of choice gifts from his master. And he set out and went to Aram Naharim, to the city of Nahor. He made the camels kneel down beside, outside the city by the well of water. It was toward evening, the time when women go to the well to draw water. And he said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. I am standing here by the spring of water and the daughters of the townspeople are coming here to draw water. Let the girl to whom I shall say, please offer your jar that I may drink. And who shall then say, drink and I will water your camels. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I shall know that you have shown steadfast love to my master. Before he had finished speaking, there was Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, son of Nilkah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, coming out with her water jar on her shoulder. The girl was very fair to look upon, a virgin whom no man had known. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please, let me sip a little water from your jar. Drink, my lord, she said, and quickly lowered her jar upon her hand and gave him a drink. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw for your camels also until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran again to the well to draw, and she drew for all his camels. The servant gazed at her in silence to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a nose ring weighing half a shekel and two bracelets for her arms, weighing ten gold shekels, and said, Tell me whose daughter you are. Is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. 
she added, we have plenty of straw and fodder and a place to spend the night. The man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord. He said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love and his faithfulness toward my master. <coughs> As for me, the Lord has led me on the way to the house of my master's kin. Then the girl ran and told her mother's household about these things. Rebekah had a brother whose name was Laban. And Laban ran out to the man to the spring. As soon as he had seen the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's arms, and when he heard the words of his sister Rebekah, thus the man spoke to me, he went to the man. And there he was, standing by the camels in the spring. He said, Come in, O blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside when I prepared the house and a place for the camels? So the man came into the house, and Laban unloaded the camels, and gave him straw and fodder for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the feet of the men who were with him. Then food was set before him to eat. But the servant said, I will not eat until I have told you my errand. Laban said, Speak on. So the servant said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old. And he has given him all that he has. My master may be swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred and get a wife for my son. Down to verse 56. He said to them, Do not delay me, since the Lord has made my journey successful. Let me go, that I may go to my master. They said, We will call the girl and ask her. And they called Rebekah, and said to her, Will you go out with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Beer Laharoi and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and looking up he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is that man there, walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. And Isaac brought her to his mother, Sarah, to her tent. He took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted, even after his mother's death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, 
as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A New Testament reading I have chosen to kind of echo some of the uh, teachings and promises in Genesis 24. It's from the Epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 8 to 19. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For Abraham looked to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains on the seashore. All of these died in faith, without having received the promises. But from a distance they saw them and greeted them. They confessed that they were but strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way, make it clear that they are seeking a true homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left, they would have had opportunity to go back. But as it was, they desired a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. He who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only son, of whom he had been told, It is through Isaac that descendants shall be named for you. He considered the fact that God was able even to raise someone from the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did not. He did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked blessings for the future on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the top of his staff. And by faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave instructions about his burial. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh God, your constant care and love are shed upon us from above. Throughout our lives, in every stage, from infancy to later age. We thank you, Lord, for dreams of youth, for wisdom leading on to truth, for memories gathered through the years, and faith that grows from joys and tears. 
All time is yours, O Lord, to give. May we in all the years we live find every day of life is new, a celebration, Lord, with you. Let not the passing of the years rob us of joy, nor cause us fears, and give us faith, O Lord, that we may live with you eternally. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be found acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Go to my country and my kindred and get a wife for my son Isaac. O Lord, God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. The girl to whom I shall say, please offer your jar that I may drink, who shall then say, drink and I will water your camels. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I shall know that you have shown steadfast love to my master. When Abraham's servant heard the words, he bowed himself to the ground before the Lord. Isaac took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. In the common lectionary, um, Genesis 24, different selection of verses than I've chosen for this evening, is assigned for proper 14. And uh, in fact, for uh, the last quite a while, the Old Testament lessons have come from the book of Genesis. We've been thinking about the story of Abraham for the last three weeks. And now we turn to this miracle son of his who was born, Isaac, and Rebecca, who would become his wife. As I said, it's the longest story, one of the longest chapters in the Bible, 67 verses. It's a wonderful love story. Lots of repetition, kind of a storyteller's trick, art. You know, you can imagine this being told for generation after generation of the Jewish people. It's a love story, though, from a very different time. It's an arranged marriage, for instance. We'll talk a bit about that. And for that reason, there's something subversive in the story. And uh, we'll talk about that too in a minute. But first I want to talk about, well, what I want to talk about in this are three things. The first is covenant love. The second is signs and blessings. And the third is grateful worship. And I got all of these ideas reading Walter Brueggemann's wonderful commentary on this text. Covenant love. Signs of blessings and grateful worship. So first, I want to talk about covenant love, or as it's translated in some English Bibles, loving kindness. In verse 49, uh, in our reading, was translated as loyalty and truth. The Hebrew word is hesed. A special partnership and loyalty based on love. And this is a special word. I like to translate it covenant love. Of the love that God has for his chosen people. He's entered into a relationship with them based on promises, a covenant relationship. And he loves them through thick and thin. Uh, he loves them when they're obedient. 
and God's blessing is advanced by their cooperation. God loves them when they're disobedient, and God's blessing is advanced by the discipline that God sends upon them and the consequences of their sins. But always, God loves them, faithfulness to his promise to them, and his partnership with them. Verses 12 and 14, and also in verse 27, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love and his faithfulness toward my master. Covenant love is, in fact, the foundation of marriage, of family, in a sense, of society itself. God's faithful love for us and our obedient response of reflecting that faithful love and how we treat one another and all of God's creation is a gift of God. In the Old Testament, this promise rings again and again and again. Hey, you shall be my people, he says to Israel, and I will be your God. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Emmanuel, as Isaiah calls it, God is with us. And of course, in the New Testament, the name Emmanuel is given to Jesus. Jesus is the human being who is perfectly obedient to God and is truly a person of God. But Jesus is also God come among us, the God of people living among his people. This God of steadfast love, of covenant love. And so the servant is very loyal to his master Abraham. And he trusts in God's covenant love and he prays to the God of his master Abraham and looks for God to guide him and bless him and fulfill his pilgrimage and his task, returning to the land from which Abraham came to get the daughter-in-law for Abraham, a wife for the child of the promise, for Isaac. And this is love, says the Apostle John in his first epistle, chapter 4, verses 10 to 12. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, so we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and God's love is perfected in us. The foundation of this story and its background is God's steadfast love. And if you notice in Genesis 24, God is invoked by name, not only by Abraham, of course, and by his servant, but in fact, by Abraham's family. Back in uh, the land to which the servant goes, God is called Yahweh, it's translated as the Lord. And uh, this name, of course, this holy name, this personal name, I am who I am, you know, this personal name that God gave to his people, this steadfast love of this personal God is the background and the foundation of this beautiful love story and is the background, the foundation of all love and all human stories. Second, I want to talk about signs and blessings. Literature from the ancient Near East, as you can imagine, as a lot of ancient literatures, are full of miraculous signs from the gods. Often something that happens in nature. And it's not uncommon for heroes in the stories from the ancient world to look for signs to confirm what they're going to do or to guide them. In the Bible, for instance, one of the famous signs is in the book of Judges when Gideon is not sure he should take the Israelites into battle. And he lays out a fleece and he asks the Lord uh, twice about this, say, one, once that the fleece in the morning, although there be dew everywhere else, there be no dew on the fleece. And then he's still not sure because he doesn't want to risk the lives of his people in war. So he puts out the fleece again and he, and he wants this time for the fleece to have dew on it the next morning, but, but not the land around it. And of course, Gideon's fleece has become a favorite expression. And uh, this is being asked for a sign, something unnatural in nature itself, supernatural in nature itself. So there's two surprising things about the story. 
One surprising thing is that um, the servant asks for a very natural sign. He asks that when he goes to water his camels and he asks the woman for a jar from which to drink himself, the woman will on her own initiative, but of her own kindness and initiative, will offer to water the camels and everything else. And of course, the second thing is that um, compared to most stories about women in the ancient Near East and even up to modern times, unfortunately, Rebecca is not a silent wallflower, sort of a, a beautiful trophy wife, you know, who doesn't do much except obey everybody. Rebecca takes the initiative. When he asks her for a drink, he gives her a drink and then says, let me water your camels too. And she waters all 10 camels. I mean, this is quite, for a stranger. And then as he talks to her, she welcomes her. She doesn't go, well, let me go, go talk to my folks first. She welcomes him into her own family's home. In other words, this is a, a woman who is a natural leader, who has initiative, who is forward, who is um, quick in compassion. The kind of girl that Isaac will need as he lives as a nomad in the desert, waiting for God to deliver his promise, to give his family, his father Abraham's progeny, a uh, big promised land, and to fulfill a blessing of God to all nations. Uh, this would take not only faithful men, it would take faithful women, not only adventurous men, but adventurous women. And Rebecca shows this. And so the sign is a very natural kind of a one. It's the right girl. It's the right girl. I love the word providence. The Lord provides providence. But God provides through active people, through the active outreach and compassion of others. God blesses, but God's blessing is received through human stewards. Remember in John chapter 6, the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus says to the disciples, I'm sure with a twinkle in his eye, he says, all right, we've got to feed these people. And the disciples don't know what to do. He said, we've got no food for 5,000 people. Send them away. And Andrew brings a young boy with five loaves and two fish. Right, this young boy comes forward and says, well, sir, sir, I have five loaves and two fish. If that helps. And Jesus offers the five loaves and two fish to God in prayer. And somehow five loaves and two fish feed 5,000 people. See how Jesus used the people's own resourcefulness, the people's own gifts in a supernatural way. He didn't just go, poof, and his banquet table was all over the place. He used the faithfulness and the generosity and the sharing of the people. I believe it was a supernatural miracle. I believe that everybody was fed with food, but it was done in a way that Jesus blessed through the faithful response of the people. And that's how God will bless. That's how God gives Abraham's servant the sign that this is the right girl. This is the woman. This is the woman who is worthy of being heir of God's promise and the mother of the faithful, like Sarah was. And so we can ask for signs and we can look for blessings, but we need to expect them in... Um, ways that only uh, enrich and enable our responsibilities and the responsibilities of other people around us. God's blessings, even God's signs, aren't to take our responsibility or our calling to steward, be stewards of God's kingdom away, but to enhance it and to enrich it. So we can ask for signs as the servant did, but we need to be attentive to those signs. Gerhard von Rath, the great Old Testament scholar, talks about providence in this passage and talks about what he calls a new conception of faith. Faith is not, you know, kind of a mythological the gods coming down from heaven and doing things, you know, like we see in the cartoons or in the old ancient uh, Greek and Roman Sumerian Babylonian myths. Faith is aware that God works in his creation. 
and to the stewards of his creation. And this is God guiding and directing and blessing. And he'll give us little hints, little winks that there's a plan in all this. I call them winks from the Lord. But God's will is that we humans write our own story, although it be a story of partnership with God. There's the covenant love, the steadfast love, the hesed again. I used to take my youth group to a Jewish museum uh, in St. John. If you ever have been to the Jewish museum, I, I urge you to go to it. And they have a whole display about marriage in Jewish life. Weddings are a big deal in Jewish life. Because weddings are a way of arranging family, of continuing the history of God's people, of overcoming the odds and how much the Jewish people have overcome. And they've done so through marriage and family life and raising children and giving them the faith. And so the Jewish Museum highlights marriage and family in a very, very special way. And it's not about sexuality, it's not about romance. It's about hesed, covenant love, joining together and making a family and being fruitful and productive for God. Did you notice in this story, in verse 21, 40, 42, and 56, the word success is used? See, God's blessing is for human prosperity. And God's not just a God of religion. Religion has its place. God is a God of life. God's a God of everyday life, of love and marriage, of working, and success. God wants to bless us with this success. It will fulfill his purpose. Well, we've talked about covenant love and we've talked about signs and blessings. Now I want to talk about grateful worship. Verse 12. O Lord God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today. Verses 26 and 27. The servant bowed his head and worshiped the Lord and said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love. Verse 52. We're talking about Laban and Bethuel. After they say yes, because they say this comes from the Lord, when Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed himself to the ground before the Lord. Worship. The best way to invoke and to enjoy the presence of the God of steadfast love. To invoke and enjoy signs and blessings from God in our human journey. Is to enrich our life. Frame our life with worship, with worship. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the ways in which we can make worship formally but informally part of our daily life. This is such an important part of spirituality is to be aware of and enjoy and the wonder of the fact that we are children of a God of covenant love, a God of steadfast love, who gives us blessings and shows us his signs all around us, even a, a butterfly that sort of goes by and lands on a beautiful flower. You know, there's so many blessings around us each day. We seem to have, due to I think our fallen human nature, an instinct to curse and complain. Especially as Canadians, we love to complain. I think joy will come and maturity will come when this instinct to curse becomes instead an instinct to bless. And we use God's name, not cursing, it's an expression of anger, but in blessing, or maybe in supplications, as an expression of prayer and of thankfulness. We've learned how to curse. We need the discipline of learning how to bless. So there we have it, my three points for today, God's covenant love, signs and blessings, and grateful worship. 
I hope in your personal life you may experience covenant love, that God is your God. Through signs and blessings, by opening your spirit to God's spirit with grateful worship. I remember I was um, 31 years old when I met Valda. And uh, I had been praying a lot for a partner. I found it very difficult, very tempting to be a single young man in his 20s. I finally reached a point where I thought maybe God's calling me to be single. So I prayed for that chastity of, of mind and spirit. <coughs> and then uh, one of my prisoners had been through a very difficult divorce and he moped around for about a year and then there was a twinkle in his eye again. He had found a wonderful girlfriend. He had three children. She had five children. And um, uh, he wanted me to, to meet her. And by the way, she had a, a very close friend who was about my age. And I very quickly fell in love with Valda. She's a very good worker. I go to visit her at work. And everybody depended on her. She was so responsive. She had a deep sense of right and wrong. She was very loyal to what was good and true. And she had a wonderful sense of humor. And of course, she was beautiful and cute. And she loved the Lord. And that was, we got married in 1986. And 34 years later, we're still enjoying a very rich partnership of covenant love. She was such a sign to me of God's favor. And she's such a source of blessing. And I try to honor her every day. And thank God for her. The story of Isaac and Rebecca comes from ancient times, but as I mentioned, there's subversiveness in the text. Rebecca is much more of an active partner in this story, as she will be. The story unfolds. Nonetheless, a beautiful sign of love. Thanks be to God. Amen. On page 22 of the Canadian Book of Common Prayer, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Come to a wedding, come to a blessing, come on a day when happiness sings. Come rain or shine, come winter or summer, celebrate love and all that love brings. Thanks for the love that holds us together, parent and child and lover and friend. Thanks to the God whose love is our center, source of compassion, knowing no end. Love is the gift and love is the giver. Love is the gold that makes the day shine. Love forgets self to care for the other. Love changes life from water to wine. Come to a wedding, asking a blessing for all the years that living will prove. Health of the body, health of the spirit, Rebecca and Isaac invite us to love. On page 23 of the Book of Common Prayer, 
our prayers. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. A collect for the fourth Sunday after Trinity in the Book of Common Prayer, page 223. O God, the protector of all that trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that thou, being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our Lord. Amen. Back on page 23, the second colic. For peace, O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. And our third colic for aid against all perils. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. On page 57, a general intercession, uh, number 45. Be mindful, O Lord, of thy people bowed before thee, and of those who are absent through age, sickness, or infirmity. Care for the infants. Guide the young. Support the aged. Encourage the faint-hearted. Collect the scattered. And bring the wandering to thy fold. Travel with the voyagers. Defend the widows. Shield the orphans, deliver the captives, heal the sick. Succor all who are in tribulation, necessity, or distress. Remember for good all those that love us, and those that hate us, and those that have desired us unworthy as we are to pray for them. And those whom we have forgotten, do thou, O Lord, remember. For thou art the helper of the helpless, the savior of the lost, the refuge of the wanderer, the healer of the sick. Thou who knowest each one's need and hast heard our prayers, grant unto each according to thy merciful loving kindness and thy eternal love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For our Thanksgiving prayer, I'd like to use a wonderful prayer for our national heritage in the Canadian Book of Common Prayer. Uh, last week, Wednesday, was Canada Day, and so I'd like to use this prayer for Thanksgiving for Canada. Almighty and merciful God, 
who in thy wisdom dost divide to the nations their inheritance. We yield thee hearty thanks for thy loving kindness in appointing this good land of Canada to be our dwelling place among the children of men. For the wealth and glory of its plains and mountains, its fruitful fields and teeming waters, for the precious things of heaven, the dew, the sunshine, snow and rain in their season, and the precious things of the earth and the fullness thereof. For a land wherein there is bread without scarceness. For all this and the opportunities thus vouchsafed to us, we bless thee and magnify thy name. And we pray thee, grant us grace, so to sanctify thee in our heritage, that the world may know that thou art our God for ever and ever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Not sure if I mentioned it. That was on page 57. Sorry, on page 59 of the Book of Common Prayer in Canada. And finally, our prayer of St. Chrysostom. Kind of... Um, Framing the end of our prayers on page 24, Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Uh, this video is being posted for Saturday, Sunday morning, July the 5th, but it can be used as a Sunday service for those who cannot attend uh, public worship yet, or can be used for an evening prayer service any time during the week of July 5th. Uh, in our old parish, we will be gathering for Holy Communion at the um, St. Simons of St. Jude's Church in Bellaw Creek in Kings County at 10 a.m. Jesus, Savior, pilot me over life's tempestuous sea. Unknown waves before me roll, hiding rock and treacherous shoal, chart and compass come from thee, Jesus, Saviour, pilot me. As a mother stills her child, thou canst hush the oceans wild, boisterous waves obey thy will. When thou biddest them be still, wondrous sovereign of the sea, Jesus, Saviour, pilot me. When at last I near the shore, and the fearful breakers roar, twixt me and that peaceful land, still supported by thy hand. May I hear thee say to me, fear not, I will pilot thee. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this coming week, and indeed forevermore. Amen.